No? We're ready. We're ready. 3 p.m. A little over 3 p.m. But we're here on Tuesday. Today's topic is by demand of one of our followers. And she wrote, oh, please talk about what to do after I received ERC checks, right? So ERC checks is the checks you got out of the employee retention program. So in 2020 and 2021, when you going through pandemic, but you still hired people, the government says, I want to refund you some of the taxes that you paid. So they are coming up with this program called ERC. And you know about it, you applied it, and you got the checks coming in. It depends on how many quarters you applied for it. The checks coming by quarter, right? You could be very well getting six of them, two of them, whichever one that is you are getting is approved by the IRS. Now, what happened after you got these checks? Are you done? Are you just happily spending it and you are finished? No, there is a huge tax liability behind you and you want to take care of it. Of course, you may say that, oh, that's not even worth it. Why do I even go through that? Don't say that. You got a $100 ERC, you only can end up paying about 20% of taxes. So you're still ahead of the game for 80%, so why not, right? So you're still good, you're good. You just have to know that you need to pay taxes on that check. How do you do that today? That's what we're gonna do and explore that. And what you have on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, is the um, is our channel. And you see our YouTube channel, right? And we want you to subscribe to it because you may not always have time at 3 p.m. to listen to me, but we are here every Tuesday. I am here every Tuesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. So you can always come back to our channel, find me. I'm right there. So all the subject we talk about it is not some sort of a playbook we already have. It is, it is really a real-time um, scenarios and the people ask questions we answer or anything came up and is urgent or necessary to talk about, we talk about, right? So this is our website, ladies and gentlemen. You can see on our website, you can see the button called Onboarding With Us. This is when you are just so busy and you're thinking about community CPA but don't know when to get on and you don't have time, click that onboarding with us button and then you can follow what's in there, sign in yourself and start uploading and we will start serving you as easy as a click. And also on this website, we also have the appointment button. This button saves you because you don't have to call our front desk to figure out when is Ying around and what type, what kind of schedule I have. You can click me right there and figure out my calendar and book my time. Yes, it's a billable time for us, we do charge you, but I have never had anyone come back to me saying, Ying, you know what? I spent some time with you, it's not worth it. Never. That would be my tattoo and I always provide valuable service to you answer to your question solid there's no what if it is just what you should do now same thing i'll tell you what you should do when you receive the erc checks so let's share screen so we can get through uh, the core content we have today i believe you're seeing my powerpoint you see how we prepare ourselves so we don't just come out without preparation we do our due diligence deliver the information that is accurate, correct, and as much as we know for today's information. And of course, you always want to know that who you are dealing with when you get online, when you listen to webinars, you want to know the credibility of the deliverer and whether they are on the market for how long, what do they do, what kind of reputation they have is all important. So to enhance that, I want to tell you that our firm, we have more than 26 years practice history. And we have about 40 professionals and collectively we speak 10 different languages. So you imagine the United Nations inside of a company, right? We have more than 10,000 clients that we serve 
worldwide. And we have four branches. We're coming up with the fifth one in Houston, Texas. And plan to open uh, in June 2024. Hopefully, constructions, everything will go on time. And But it is 2024, not going to go down to 2025. And I myself, I served on the uh, National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel for three years. That is a federal advisory committee providing advices to IRS. So just give a little plug about myself, right? So you know what I do uh, in my spare time and just volunteer. And here is the two books I wrote, Appointment with Ying at 8 a.m. and at 10 a.m. I am writing 2 p.m. as we speak right now. Um, the first two is about starting up your business. Second one is growing your business. The one I'm writing right now, it is about expanding your business beyond yourself. Small business, we all know what is small business. Mama, Papa shop, you, me, and him. And it is a personal effort on a small scale business. But how can you make your business like Microsoft? How can you make your business like Starbucks? Okay, coffee shop can be very little, can be very big. So that expansion of it is in the 2 p.m. And I have my last book to write, which is 6 p.m. That's about how we retire. Let's talk about that much later because I'm not ready. I don't have content, so I'm just focused on 2 p.m. right now. All right, no responsibility disclaimer. Just like I said, you want to know who delivered the knowledge. You also want to make sure that you hear it verify it, apply it. Don't just blindly believe the internet is correct. If you are in tax court and you say that, well, I heard Ying saying this on the webinar, I can even quote her, look at this webinar, she said blah, 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 this. Then the judge will say that it doesn't matter because it is a free service, you cannot rely on that, and you need to do your own assignment. So with that said, you know what I mean, right? So don't rely on things that is offered free on the internet. So with ER, with ERC, you know, general understanding I already talked to you about, and it is a retention, employee retention credit that is offered to you. So you understand that because you already applied, you almost, you already got your checks. So the answer to this question, does ERC affect my tax return? The answer is a big fat yes, yes. So many times you ask, I will say yes. The amount of your ERC refund, that amount is going to be your taxable income in the year where the refund is coming from. So for example, if you have a quarter three 2020 ERC refund, then your 2020 tax return income tax return will change. So you will amend your 2020 income tax return because you got a check for the third quarter of 2020, 941. Make sense, right? So most of the taxpayers claim wages expense as a deduction uh, on their income tax return because your ERC credit check come back, and you know that when you calculate that refund, you calculate it with the salaries, with other miscellaneous expenses, whatever you did. If the health insurance is in there, you want to reverse your health insurance. If it is salary wages is there, you reverse your wages in that same period. That is why I say it is increase your income tax. In reality, it actually reduces your expense. That's why in turn, your taxable in income is increased, right? It is not to have you add it back into income. You don't do it that way. You don't change your tax return by adding the check to it, no. You change your tax return by reducing the salary, whatever expenses that is, accordingly, then come up with a bigger taxable income. Make sense? All right, so the tax, the tax treatment of ERC can be, can be complex, but in general, with all the small businesses that we know, you, me, and others, 
we do not capitalize our, our salaries and wages. But in some instance, you might already capitalize your salary and wages for whatever reason. For example, if, it is, if your labor is part of the uh, big build-out, um, equipment build-out, and you might include that into your equipment expense, so it's got capitalized, right? It's got into asset, it didn't get deducted right away. Then in this case, when you got an ERC refund, it need to go back to fix your depreciation. Does that make sense? So normally you don't have that issue. So I don't want you to be too concerned over that. And you just want to make sure that uh, the principle of it to return, return that expense to where it was belonged to. All right, amending tax return. Amending tax return, you should, you should get your income tax in front of you first, the original one. Right? And if you use software, a lot of those software, when you go in, for, for example, if it is TurboTax, and it's actually ask you, uh, do you, you know, do you want to do amendment? If you click yes, the system will help you to start up the column. One column is the original tax return. The other column is what are you going to change? So you want to make sure that you based on your original return to do amending to do amendment for your new change. And that is very important. Every amended return goes by the year. So if you amend 2020, you cannot use 2021 form. So you want to make sure that you use the same form for that same year. And you know, someone was saying that, well, I got like six checks in, and do I have to amend it six times? Uh, which year do I amend to? You look at your six checks and tell me which one belongs to which year. So you may be saying that, oh, Ying, three belongs to 2020, 2020, three belongs to 2021. All right. So you need to amend two years, 2020, 2021. But because of you have three checks, you add them together and you amend them in one number, not three times for each year. All right. So this is where we talk about how you can amend, you know, for which year should I adjust or amend my income tax? And there is a guidance by IRS's notice 2021-49. So it has a lot of information in there, but if you are just not having the time to read, at least you listen to this webinar and it will just give you the direction so you know how to go about it. All right. So for which year should you adjust or amend of your tax return? We talked a couple of minutes on this already. So you look at your refund check to figure out which quarter, which year and quarter they refunded you. That's how you decide which year you amend. All right, then amended tax return. If you did not claim ERC for 20, 20 and 2021 quarters and you are making claim in 2022 and you cannot adjust wages in 2022 you see this is come back to some clients they're saying that oh Ying, i already filed my 2020 2021 return i only got my erc checks in 2022 i should just go back to 2022 no you cannot and the erc has this specific requirement for you to go back to 2020, 2021, wherever that refund belongs to, all right? So you, uh, what if you say, okay, I will amend 2020, but my 2020 is a big, huge loss. If I go back to amend, am I going to pay taxes? Maybe not, because it depends on how much of a loss you had, right? So let's say if you had losses, which is bigger than your ERC checks. That just means that you will have less losses. So you, you may not end up paying taxes, but you could end up paying taxes if it is passed through entity because you have already taken the big loss into your 1040, you got a bigger refund. Now I'm changing it because you got ERC, so your bigger loss become what? Small losses, right? So when that goes to your 1040, my result of you 
paying back some taxes. And you may say, oh, wow, taxes. Okay, fine. What about interest and a penalty? Let's put it this way. If you are amending for ERC, generally speaking, the federal government don't charge you for penalty, but they do charge you for interest. Very much like when you get a refund back for late refund, did you notice that the IRS actually give you interest income as well? So the IRS is fair with you. They're like, if I hold your money for too long, I pay you interest. But if you hold my money for too long, you pay me interest. It's a fair game. But on the penalty side, it could be as much as 15% of what you owe, right? That penalty can be big. That penalty at the federal level, they normally do not charge you. We have not seen people get charged at the federal level, but we have seen people get charged at the state level. When you do amendment for the federal government, you of course gonna do it for the state as well, especially if your state is a tax income taxable state like Iowa, Minnesota, California, and of course not Texas, right? Texas doesn't have personal tax or uh, personal um, the state tax. So the penalty is imposed at the state level. And our recommendation to our client is that if you want to, you can you know, write the letter to inquiry about abatement because you have a situation where you are out of control, right? It's not you wanting to owe the money. It is because ERC checks is here. And, you know, uh, it is a program that didn't really happen right away. And I'm now just applying for it. So I'm late out of my own, out of my control. So could you please let me go without charging me? So you would have a pretty good chance to succeed at the state level. So someone also asked me that, okay, Yin, what if I apply for ERC? I haven't really received my check yet. And, but I am so believing that I, I claimed my ERC credit appropriately and I am entitled to it and I did everything right and I have gone through underwriting and with community CPA, I know that I'm right, I can do it, I, 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 can, I legitimately can claim it. And if that is the case, and our recommendation to you is that you do amendment right now instead of waiting for the check to come. The check will come sooner or later, right? But you want to get your amendment in so you don't end up paying more interest expense. Am I right? When you receive the check, you're going to see two portions of a payment. One is the actual payment you requested. The other one is the interest income that you're getting out of loaning money to IRS to use. All right. And I do want to mention about this March 22nd is already expired. There is a voluntary disclosure period. Like if you don't think your ERC was done right, if some credit company come around, promise the moon, and it did an ERC for you without even looking at any documentation that you have, you knew it's shaky, you know it is, may not be right, then you want to revert that process before March 22nd, that's possible. And now they close the voluntary disclosure process. If you're still in that boat, still don't feel like you should be applying for it, but you already did. And then that program still might be reopened because IRS did say that they may reopen that. At the same time, you may want to make sure that even if you got the check, don't cash it, if that's the case. That way, at least, um, you don't end up being accused as uh, cheating on the government, a fraudulent claim. So you want to do everything you can to keep yourself away from criminal prosecution, like some, like one of our president is subject to, right? So you want to make sure that you don't go down that path. And the lesson learned, and we want to do everything properly. And withdrawing an IRC claim, and you can do that, right? You, you know, like I said, just don't cash the check and you'll be okay. And with the ERC, you know that if you cash the check, you at least need to do amendment. And if you know you're going to get the ERC check and you're doing everything right, then I will say even if you didn't receive your ERC checks, you still go back to amend your tax return. Amending tax return is a compliance requirement. It's not a choice. It is you must do. 
All right. This kind of concludes our 30 minutes short talk about ERC, about ERC checks, about amendment for related to ERC. Show you guys again. This is where you make appointment with us on our website, communitycpa.com. You see all the partners. And these are heavy lifters, and they're not just ordinary human beings. These people are just nose ins and out, and you give them a chance and they will serve you. And just like myself, and I would love to give my knowledge to you, you can take it, I would always be giving. So that's really how we operate here. And with our community CPA um, you know, webinars, we have Catherine at communitycpa.com. That's the email address you can send in for your wish list. We get a lot of inspirations from you because you tell us what you want to hear, what is important to you. So we draw that inspiration and we create uh, webinars for all of you. So I hope to see you again on Saturday. And our phone number is 515-288-3188. It rings at all of our branches. When you call that number, you know there's many, many phones are ringing at the same time. So someone will come online to talk to you. And we do. We are the only CPA firm I know open six days a week, every day, every week, every month, and every year. We have been doing that since the first day we opened the door. So we are Monday to Saturday, 8.30 to 5.30, and I hope to hear you.